Hey guys, what's happening? Um, sitting here doing my reset. You're gonna have to excuse the, I can roll the window up, I guess. You're gonna have to excuse the noise, the engine noise. Um, if you saw my previous video, I killed my batteries last night, and so I'm letting the truck run. I try not to idle. It's bad for the emissions. It burns fuel unnecessarily, but I killed the batteries last night, so I gotta let them charge up good so I don't have the same problem tonight. Anyway, a lot of my video, um, motivation or inspiration or content, hey, that's the word they use, right? Content. Um, I get the ideas from conversations that either I have or I, I see debate going on on Facebook forums. Um, you know, and it's not to say that I'm always right because, you know, stuff changes constantly. So this one has to do with air brake restriction that let's 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 get that clear air brakes in a licensing standpoint it's a restriction it's not an endorsement there's a big difference between an endorsement and a restriction and the the layman's way to put it a restriction is something that when you get a license that's a commercial, they impose it on you. Um, on your non-commercial license, they sometimes also put restrictions and that'll be something like you have to wear corrective lenses or you can only drive at night. I'm sorry, at day. <laughs> I got that one backwards. And so your restrictions typically only apply on your commercial driver's license. Um, the restrictions I'm talking about are like air brakes or automatic only, or um, fifth wheel restriction. Um, those types of restrictions typically are only applied on a CDL. An endorsement is something that forces you to get a CDL so that you can apply the endorsement. And so, your restrictions, if you, if you look at most of them, I'll, I'll attach a little video. Most of those restrictions, fifth wheel only, automatic only, air brakes included, only apply when you are in a commercial vehicle application. And so if you have a non-CDL vehicle, it can have air brakes. If you have a non-CDL vehicle, it can be a stick shift. If you have a non-CDL vehicle, um, what's, what's another, one of the other restrictions on brain fading? Um, Wow, I forgot it. Well, I think they have to do with brakes. Anyway, and so in my, in my attachment here, you'll, you'll see I kind of go over the feds. Um, the federal regulations are a minimum set forth by the FMCSA. Some people try and use those as the end all be all. You have to be careful when you do that because at the very bottom of the page, I'll show that in, in the next clip, at the very bottom of the page, it says your state can and is, they're authorized to, they're within their rights to set more restrictive licensing standards and they can add endorsements and restrictions. Having said that, they have to be called out clearly on your license. So the conversation I was having with someone on Facebook is they believe that you cannot operate a vehicle with air brakes without a CDL and the endorsement. This is not true. A non-CDL vehicle does not need the restriction removed. It's not an endorsement, it's a restriction. When you cross the line into a CDL vehicle, you have to have the restriction removed to have air brakes on a class B or a class A. Where that gets a little weird, and, and even I kind of smacked my forehead when someone first mentioned to me, and they were absolutely right. So if you have, let's say an F650 that has air brakes, it's under 26,001 pound GVWR, and it has air brakes, it does not need um, the restriction removed. It doesn't, however, However, this is where you can get caught, same vehicle, different rule will apply. If you go out and get your hazmat endorsement and you have a class C commercial, 
with the hazmat endorsement and you jump in that same vehicle that does not require a CDL, here's the jacked up thing. When you load a hazmat load on it, or if you exceed the, the, the 16 passenger, or if, if you hit 16 or more and you need the passenger endorsement, if for any reason you need a Class C commercial, all of a sudden you will need that air brake uh, restriction removed because now you're operating a commercial driver's license required vehicle. That's a caveat there. And, and when someone first like mentioned it to me, it went in one ear and out the other. And then someone looked at me and said, what, you're not gonna bark about this? And I'm like, what do you mean? And then they repeated it and I thought about it. I'm like, oh wow, you're right. You are right. And if you open up the book and read it and interpret it, it's to my understanding, it's correct. It's no different than if you get, you know, an F-650, one of those limo buses like they use in, in Vegas a lot. It's an F-650, so the GVWR is lower, but you're required to have a passenger endorsement so that you can operate, you know, the limo standpoint, and it has air brakes. You need the air brake restriction removed from your license. You do need to go pass your test with the air brake uh, I keep wanting to say endorsement, but it's a restriction with it removed because you can get popped for not having that endorsement. Anyway, back to the topic. The, the, the question or conversation is based on a non-CDL vehicle not needing um, the restriction removed. And if your state has a restriction imposed on you, this gentleman says that in his state, they have a restriction that applies to non-CDL licenses. In other words, your Class C. If such a restriction appear, or if such a restriction appear, a um, little bit off. Should I pause that? Eh, I'll start over. So if such a restriction exists on your Class C non-commercial license, they have to put it on the license itself. And that's on the federal regs. Now, I said it a minute ago, uh, you'll hear it in the clip, um, but the way the feds get what they want when they write these rules is states have to comply with the federal licensing rules. They have to meet or exceed the standard or they don't receive the federal highway money that every state needs. Let's face it, every state needs that money, right? You know, our freeways are bad enough. It doesn't matter what state you're from. Since I went over the road, I used to criticize California really bad about our highways. Dude, Louisiana, Indiana, Michigan, just to name a few. Holy moly. Um, I think I need to go see the dentist. I think I got I to gotta fill in rattling loose. Anyway, and I have an air ride steer axle, and I still think I, I got to fill in coming loose. Anyway, here comes a clip. Hopefully this helps clear the air for some of you guys. All right, so here we are at the FMCSA's website, and this particular page is specific to cover endorsements and restrictions. So in the beginning here, you know, the overview, basically drivers that are required to have a CDL, yada, 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 you know, that's kind of the same old boring stuff, and we can, we can make this a 10-hour long video, which I'm known for, but going down to the nitty gritty, what we are talking about here is the, the classes of license, okay? And contrary to popular belief, there is a class A CDL, a class B CDL, and a class C CDL. Yes, a class C CDL is federally recognized. And yes, your state will offer it. All states are required to meet and match the bare minimum set forward by the FMCSA. Your state has the right, the authority, and often does set more stringent standards, but we'll get to that. Your state has to offer Class C as a commercial, and I guarantee you they do. If they did not, they would not receive federal money for their highways. 
That's just how the feds did this. So, okay. Endorsements and restrictions. This is, this is the statement that makes or breaks it. Drivers who operate special types of commercial motor vehicles must pass additional tests to obtain any of the following endorsements placed on their CDL. Again, placed on the CDL, meaning if you do not have a CDL, these endorsements cannot be placed on your license. Likewise, neither can the restrictions. That's why there's a difference between an endorsement and a restriction. You can get an endorsement for a Class C, a Class B, or a Class A, provided you make it a commercial. If your license is not commercial, they cannot place the restrictions below on your license. So, real quick, the endorsements, T, doubles and triples, P, passenger, N is tanker, H is hazardous, X, which is what I have, combination tanker and hazardous, which means I can do either or, S is school bus, S is the only one I do not possess. I possess the rest of them. So, okay. Um, only three endorsements are allowed on the commercial um, learner's permit. That's kind of for obvious reasons, um, but they only give you these three. So, okay, fine. Restrictions. Again, these can only be placed on your commercial license. These cannot be randomly placed on your regular license unless you flip your license over and your state has specifically called out that it, you have this restriction. So, L, if the driver does not pass the air brakes knowledge test and does not correctly identify the air brake system components, does not properly conduct an air brake systems check, or does not take the skills test in a vehicle with full air brake systems, the driver must receive an L no full air brake restriction placed on their license. Z is basically for an air over hydraulic system. And then E is no uh, manual transmission, which a lot of you guys get because you went and took your test in, a, um, in an automatic. And then O is your um, other than fifth wheel hookup. Basically, if you go in a gooseneck or a pinnel hook, um, M is if you possess a Class A CDL, but you take your passenger endorsement in a Class B. So basically, what it means is you can tow, you can drive a bus with passengers, but you can't tow a Class A trailer. Um, that one's a little bit funky, but I hope I explained that one well. N, a driver possesses a Class B CDL but has his or her passenger school bus endorsement. Wait a minute, isn't that what I just read? Did I get that one wrong? Oh, well, yeah, it's in a Class C. You took your, your, you took your school bus um, test in a Class C vehicle, again, because you can have a Class C commercial license. They do exist, co contrary to popular belief. Um, then your Class V is kind of more related to your medical certificate if you've been, uh, if you got yours with a variance. And so at the bottom, for those that say, well, Miguel, maybe in your home state, but my home state is different. So the federal regulation or the federal requirement is what your state must match as a minimum. At the bottom here, it states, states may have a more restrictive category for class of license or have additional codes for endorsements or restrictions on CDLs. Notice it doesn't say on non-CDLs. It says on CDLs that are not mentioned in the federal regulations as long as these items are fully explained on the license document. So this means for those of you that believe that your license has a special state-imposed restriction for air brakes, this means your regular non-commercial license, Class C, must have it broken out 
on your Class C, either on the front or on the back, that you are restricted by Class L to not operate um, a vehicle with full air brakes. If it's not on there, you are legal to operate the vehicle. If your state pops you for it, you need to go fight that in court and you can beat it with the simple documentation on this page. Your state is not in compliance with the federal licensing regulations. That's what that boils down to. Anyway, I hope this helps. And so, I was just looking at that clip and it seems like no matter how hard I try, I can't do like a five minute video. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what it is. I'm just too damn long winded. But, so a little bit about me. I got my CDL in 1987. Um, it was pre-CDL, um, before the feds made a standard across the board. And so in 92, when they made the standard, I worked for the company, I already had my license, and they actually were the ones that told me, hey, go out and get your license. But what happened was they, they changed some of, the, some of the requirements, and so did California, and we had multiple drivers that needed to all of a sudden get class B's and class A's. Um, and I say class A because California did that thing where if the trailer has a 10,000 pound GVWR, it needs a class A. And we had a few trailers that had, you know, like a 14,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. And so the problem is the, the standard changed in a way, you'll have to excuse a truck just drove by and it's, it's really white. <laughs> um, but so when they changed the standard, and they made the pre-trip happen. I, I took my CDL before the pre-trip inspection requirement was in place. And so some of you might think, oh, Miguel, you cheated, you, you had it easy. You could say I did, but what ended up happening was we had like 13 drivers that needed to get licensed. Um, and the DMV was so inundated with people going in there trying to take their license. I was in there one day and you know the lady that was like the commercial lady, you know, she knew I knew my stuff because I brought the drivers in, she and I would talk and, you know, she kind of looked at me and she goes, how many more drivers do you have? And I told her and she says, you know, we have a program and you seem to, to know what's going on. She goes, let me get you a packet and see if you're interested. So they call it a DL40, uh, that's the form you use. And basically they call it an employer number, an employer qualification number. So basically what that meant is I filled out all kinds of paperwork, sent it to Sacramento. They had me take a 40 hour class. I had to take this crazy long test. And at the end of that, I was then able to do the, um, the skills test for our drivers. They had to go in and still present a medical card and pass the written test. But as long as they got their, um, their commercial learner's permit, I could sign a document that I trained them and gave them their skills test. They would walk down with that document and they would walk out of the DMV without taking a test there with their CDL. Now, part of that training included, they trained me on how to interpret the differences between the different class licenses and the different um, endorsements and restrictions. So after I left that company, I went to go work for another equipment rental company and that company had a lot of class C trucks, basically like, like little road, rollback type trucks. Um, so you could haul little scissor lifts and you know, things under 10,000 pounds. In fact, they called the truck a Model 12. So if something weighed 12,000 pounds or less, you could put it on that, they called it a C truck. And then the Model 18 was a B truck and then they had, you know, full-blown rigs and so when you work in this environment in the equipment rental business you learn all the different categories and the cutoffs for your your classes of licenses because you're hiring drivers you know you're hiring a C driver because it's cheaper than to hire someone and put them straight in a B truck that's that's what it boils down to it's it's money and so as a manager you need to learn the cutoff point for each class and so this is something I'm kind of familiar with. Um, if your state is different, if you have documentation that really does clearly say you cannot operate 
or if, if or what it'll do is your state will list uh, air brakes as an endorsement. That's what it is. They'll list it as an endorsement instead of a restriction. If your state has that, shoot it over. Put, put it in the comments. Let me know what state it is. I've not been able to find one yet. And this argument comes up a lot. And again, I apologize. This video got really long. And uh, I'm trying to shorten them up, guys. I really am. <laughs> Thanks for watching.